Hey YouTube, Retro Rewinder here. Uh, I've got a really cool pickup video. Um, a lot of this stuff is very valuable, um, pretty rare. That is why the title of this video is RPGs, Really Pricey Games. So let's just jump right into this. I'm going to start with the stuff that isn't as cool. The first thing that you saw in that video was I picked up a uh, Xbox 360. It has the hard drive with it. And then uh, later in that video I also found a controller for uh, $5.99 to go with it. It didn't have a controller to begin with. Tested it, got this in the Salvation Army, uh, found the console, and then found the cords in a different location. Tried it out, it worked just fine, or as I, um, it loaded everything, no red ring. I haven't actually tried to see if it plays disc yet, but I'm pretty sure it will. It had a disc in there, and it brought it up on the screen. And I paid um, $19.99 for this, so 20 bucks. Uh, with a controller, so twenty twenty six dollars for a complete Xbox 360. Sorry, I'm gonna go in and out of camera a little bit because I'm kind of in a cramped space. Um, but I basically just plugged all the cords in, and they didn't charge me extra for it. So they wanted like two bucks for the cords anyway, which wasn't I would have paid that if they would have charged me, but they didn't. So um, got that for uh, twenty six dollars with the controller. Uh, moving on. At a Goodwill, I picked up a copy of Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, complete. The disc is in really good shape, too. Never played um, Final Fantasy Tactics. I really like Final Fantasy. I'm not real big into Tactics games, so we'll uh, see how good it is. I'll try it out at some point, I'm sure. And paid $1.99 for it, so that was a pretty good find as well. I'm going to uh, break in, and something that you haven't seen on the video is I did a trade. Um, it's like the, I think the fourth trade we've done with uh, me and Gamer Emporium, and he sent me a note. And I really need to get better at sending notes. Um, I always think to, and then I get everything packaged up and forget to put it in there. So uh, this is his note. Retro Rewinder. Here is another awesome trade, bro. Thanks again for the deal. You, sir, are awesome. Wish I could have gotten those other games, but it's okay. Maybe another time. Love your vids, man. Keep it up. You always get good stuff for sure. I love Resident Evil games. But I don't have a gun con anymore, so enjoy till next time, Gamer Emporium. And um, the game that he sent me was Resident Evil Dead Aim. Um, I traded him a game, I don't even remember what it was at the moment, and sold him one. Um, I'm sure he'll put that up on a video sometime, so if you want to see that, just go to his channel. His link will be in the description below. I don't have a gun con uh, either, but I really like Resident Evil games, and I want to get all of the Resident Evil games released over North America. I'm not even sure if they're separate games not released here, but I don't really collect imports. So I do want to get all the Resident Evils at some point, so I've been working on that. So I just wanted to jump that in there. Um, okay, moving on. There, in the video where I picked up the PS2, I also had this, which is why the camera was so shaky. I picked up a NES power pad. I actually had this in my hand when I found the PS2. I wasn't going to film this, but um, I decided since the PS2 was there, I would go ahead and film it. I saw the PS2 when I walked by earlier. So um, I actually picked this up for $3.99. It's in great shape. It doesn't even look like it's really been used, so this is a, a double if anyone needs a power pad. I already have one. So I got that, and also I got the PS2. And I pretty much pick these up anytime I can. As you saw in my last video, I have a ton already. Um, I picked this up for $14.99. Came with the uh, AV cable and a cord extender for the controller. So I'll probably go ahead and keep that. And I also found a game, a game, sorry, a memory card in a different section of the store. And they wanted 99 cents for it. So I went ahead and just plugged it into the system and took it up there and they didn't charge any extra for it, which is a good tip. Any type of accessories that you find, go ahead and plug them into the system and take them up. And most times that I've experienced, they don't charge you for them. And if you really don't want to pay the price of an accessory and they tell you, no, sorry, uh, that's paid extra, just tell them you don't want it and they'll set it aside. Okay, moving on. To the video, the first of the garage sale videos, um, it was a younger guy like myself, uh, had a, basically was doing reselling, 
had all of his good stuff inside, so I filmed um, in his garage. He didn't really have anything. He wanted like five bucks a piece per game, and there wasn't anything that was really jumping out to, and that I wanted to pay five bucks for. The only thing that I found was a copy of Rad Gravity for the NES. Um, I believe it's complete. It has this little uh, player's guide, which looks like, I don't think it's really a player's guide, it's more of a, uh, oh no, it, it is. I don't know if this is the way it originally came, just a little black and white thing, but if that is, then I would consider it complete. Never played this game. Sorry, that's gonna bug me. Anyway, so I got that for five bucks, and I asked if he had anything else, and he said that he had his better stuff inside that he was planning on putting on eBay. So I walked in to his room and um, basically got the pick of all of his doubles and stuff. And I ended up spending $20 total for everything you're getting ready to see, including Rad Gravity. So the first thing I picked up is a kind of beat up copy or box of Secret of Evermore. Um, it's not in the best of shape. There's, it's mostly, you know, folds and stuff that's wrong with it. There's no like rips or anything like that. But I figured it was a cool box to have. Um, he wanted, I think, five dollars for this, but since it was beat up, um, I think he took three for it. The uh, next thing he get, I got from him, was Mega Man Battle Network for Red Sun, and these are all just empty boxes. Um, one of them had the manual. I don't think it's this one. This is just the box, no manual. I recently got this game in a trade with um, BK. So, that'd be cool now that I can uh, have the box. I'm just looking for the manual for that now. I think he wanted $3 for that one as well. And a copy of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. I just picked this game up uh, a couple weeks ago, and this one does have the manual. Um, I got the game for $10, bucks, um, which was a little bit under retail. It was a, it was a pretty good deal. Um, so getting the box, he wanted 3 bucks for that one as well. And probably my favorite out of all the things I got from him was the box for Mario Party 2. It's in pretty decent shape. I mean, none of these were perfect. It's got a huge sticker on the back. I'm hoping a hair dryer to that will uh, cause that to come off without ripping anything. So, a uh, really cool one, Nintendo 64 box to get Mario Party 2. So definitely the two highlights from that for me was Secret of Evermore, even though it's beat up, and Mario Party 2. Okay, so the last things are by far the um, the best of this video, and um, I'll actually do something before those. Um, I also picked up a copy of Pokemon Red at Goodwill for two ninety nine. That was a cool find, but it's it's not uh, the best. This is definitely the best at the end here. So, the uh, last garage sale you saw was a reseller. Well, all of his work collector items, he had them priced accordingly. He talked to me uh, quite a bit while I was there about how he just doesn't really like messing with eBay. So, he really knew the prices of everything he had. So, he wasn't just going to give this stuff away, basically. But um, I did keep c catch him slipping a little bit, and I'll explain that here in a second. So, uh, the cool one of the coolest things... This is all cool stuff. I don't know why I keep saying this. This is all really quality stuff here. The first thing I got was the whole Dot .hack series for PS2. The first four, not the GU series. So, RMG Castle. I told you you'd be pretty jealous about this, even though I think you have all these. And you got a slightly better deal than I did. But these are all complete and very minty. The discs in here are awesome. The DVDs are all there. The manuals are perfect. So I got the whole uh, first four, which was Dot .hack Mutation, which is part two, Dot .hack Outbreak, part three, and Dot .hack Quarantine, part four, and Dot .hack Infection, part one. Uh, the only thing that's even slightly wrong with any of these is that they have stickers on the case from GameStop, as you see in that one, has like the 1999. That's the only thing that's really wrong with these. They're all in perfect shape. Um, these retail, it, it was like 185 was the average. So yeah, 215 to the uh, 150 mark, that's right. So about a 185 average. And he wanted $90. That is a lot more than I would normally pay for these types of things. Or I shouldn't say these types of things. For disc-based games. But I knew these would definitely hold their value. So I ended up paying the $90. So about 20 
uh, 23 bucks a game. So not bad at all for those four. Okay, moving on. The thing that I caught him slipping on is I got a copy of uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time and the Zelda Master Quest. And um, also a copy of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Master Quest Duo. Now, this is a not for resale game, and um, and the rarity is pretty high up there on the GameCube. This game alone is like an $85 game with both, both discs by itself. Uh, this one's not quite near that. But the thing about this was, when I opened it up, um, this game only had Wind Waker in it. It did not have the Master Quest game. This one uh, only comes with one disc, but it did have the Master Quest game and the Ocarina of Time. So basically, I'm going to take the disc out of this one and put it in this copy, and I'm going to keep this copy. I think I'm going to hold on to this for now because I'd like to have every Zelda game boxed and complete, so um, getting this variation I think would be pretty cool too. But the, the reason I caught him slipping is, first of all, it says worth $50 to $80 uh, for both and make offer. I ended up getting these two games for $35 total, which really um, ended up being one complete game and the case and I basically have an extra case and manual for this. The thing that I caught him slipping on is I'm pretty sure that he looked these games up separate. So he looked up Ocarina of Time and saw that it was about a $30 game and looked up this one and saw that it was about a you know, $40, $50 game. So he priced it $50 to $80 is what it was worth make an offer. I don't think that he looked this game up separately as it is a separate game. So he didn't understand the rarity of this one. So getting this game alone for $35 would have been a great deal. So um, this is definitely the most rare game in my GameCube collection now. And those four previous uh, PS2 games are the top of the PS2 games in my collection. So as you're about ready to see, again, I picked up a lot of rarest games. So my PS2 now has a new rarest game. GameCube has a new rarest game. And the final thing that I picked up, I believe it's the final thing. Yes, it is. Uh, I was at Half Price Books um, looking through their games. And I noticed uh, this title stood out quite a bit. I knew that it was somewhat valuable. I wasn't sure the rarity of it. Um, I talked to Game Reporting a little bit uh, through Facebook, and he uh, confirmed that it was a pretty valuable game. This game retails for about $85 as well on average. Uh, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. They only had it priced at $49.99. And the game is Valkyrie po Profile. So $49.99. Um, I had a 10% off coupon, so it would have lowered it to $45. But I was talking to uh, the guy that does the pricing for the video game section. At this particular location, they only have one guy that does the pricing, which is kind of weird. But I got talk to, talking to him a little bit, and I said, you know, $45 was a really good deal. But, I, you know, I, I didn't know about <clears throat> spending that much money. He told me if I'd just come back on Tuesday which this was on a uh, Thursday or Friday, I believe. He told me if I'd just come back on Tuesday, I could get the game then and get 20% off because at this particular location, uh, this half price has Retro Tuesdays, and that includes video games, and it's 20% off the whole day. So um, I told him that I didn't know if I wanted to come back then or if I should just get it out. He said that it had been here for multiple weeks. I just never noticed it because I go to this half price quite often. It was kind of uh, sitting in the, the bottom corner of the shelf the very first time I saw it. So I decided that I would take the chance. I came back on Tuesday and it was still there. So I picked up a, cop a complete copy of Valkyrie Profile. Um, the discs are in really good shape. The first one has hardly any scratches. The second one has just like two very minor scratches that aren't going to affect gameplay at all and the manual for $40. And this is, you know, by far the most rare game in my regular PlayStation collection now. So like I said, this video is just full of really quality pickups. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I really appreciate you guys watching, liking, and commenting. And until next time.